Hi guys, welcome to Learn Today IUCSA. In this video, I will talk about Chapter 5 Nuclear Physics. In this chapter, we will focus on two fundamental concepts. First, the nuclear model of an atom. Second, radioactivity. The flow of this video will be in correspondence to the 2023 to 2025 IGCSE syllabus. So let's take a quick review on what we are discussing today. For the first part, 5.1, the nuclear model of the atom, we will look into the structure of the atom and the nucleus. And for the second part, 5.2, radioactivity, we will go through detection of radioactivity, emission of alpha, beta, and gamma, half-life calculations, and safety precautions in handling radioactive substances. Alright, let's get started. The nuclear model of an atom. So, we have got here a model of an atom. It consists of three subatomic particles, which are protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons exist inside the nucleus of an atom, which is the core of an atom. And you have electrons orbiting on the shell around the nucleus. Protons have a relative charge of plus 1, electrons have a relative charge of negative 1, and neutrons are neutral, meaning they have no charges. So you can write them as 0. And as for the relative mass of proton and neutron, it would be just 1. And as for electron, it is 2000 times lighter than proton and neutron, so the mass is almost negligible. In addition to understanding the structure of an atom, it is essential to know how atoms can form ions. Atoms can form positive ions by losing electrons or form a negative ion by gaining electrons. Around the year 1911, a scientist called Ernest Rutherford carried out an experiment to understand the structure of an atom better. This is how the setup of the experiment looks like. Alpha particles were stored in a lead box and had a small hole for them to shoot out in a straight line. Now, why alpha particles are used here? It's because it has high energy so the particles can bombard through the gold foil. And the fluorescent screen here is to trace alpha particles that hit them as they will glow. When the alpha particles are emitted, most of them pass through directly through the gold foil. However, a small fraction of the alpha particles experience significant deflection and a very few of them bounce back. This is the representation that you usually come across in your textbooks or you will see in exam questions. So, now, how can one understand the structure of an atom better from this experiment? Hereby are the conclusions made from the observation. When the majority of them go straight, it tells us that the atom is mainly empty space. When some are deflected through small angles, it tells us that the positive alpha particles are repelled by the positive nucleus, since we learned that likely charges repel each other, hence the deflection. Lastly, a very small numbers are deflected straight back, and this tells us that the nucleus is extremely small. Next, the nucleus. Now that we have understood better the structure of the atom, we can look into the composition of the nucleus by looking at this model. If we look into the center of the atom, we will find its nucleus. It is made up of positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons. So this makes our nucleus positively charged overall. Now let's look into nuclide notation. Atomic symbols are written in a specific notation that we call a nuclide notation. The top number here is the nucleon number, which is the total number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus of an atom. And the bottom number here represents the proton number, or in another term, we can say the atomic number. Atoms can go through two types of nuclear reaction. First, nuclear fission. Fusion means when you split something and nuclear fusion. Fusion is when you combine or join things together to make it bigger. Now let's dive deeper into nuclear fusion. 
It is a reaction where a large unstable nuclei is broken down into two smaller nuclei. At the same time, it releases lots of energy. For example, when you have a large unstable nuclei like uranium-235 and we fire a neutron into the nucleus of the atom, it will become more unstable. Why? Because the number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus is not balanced. So this neutron only causes the uranium to become even more unstable. So what happens is that it splits it into two smaller nuclei, which we refer as the daughter nuclei. This causes some more neutrons to be released. This process is then repeated when this neutron that is being released hits another uranium, creating more daughter nuclei, making it a chain reaction which happens continuously. Second, nuclear fusion. This is when two lighter nuclei join or fuse to form a larger single nuclei. For example, two hydrogen nuclei would fuse together to form helium. This process can only happen at a very, very high temperature that can only be achieved in the sun. So take note that nuclear fusion can only happen in the sun.